Hello, friends, and welcome to your twice annual Deadline Day Kings of Anglia Ipswich Town podcast. The deadline is about to shut. It's about 10 p.m. on Thursday night, so we've still got an hour to go, but I think we're safe to talk about it. Who knows? We may get some breaking news. I don't think that's going to happen. But enough has already happened today, friends, for us to talk about an excited tones. I'm your host, speaking of excited tones, Mark Heath. And with less excited tones, my two compatriots, Andy Warren and Stuart Watson. Andy, I'm going to start with you because we, we did a little 15-minute preview of Deadline Day yesterday. Um, you got it pretty much bang on. You said one to two coming in, one going out, which obviously you've got two in, one out. Um, but in terms of the, the names that have come in, significantly more exciting than I certainly was expecting when we had that chat yesterday. I don't know what you were expecting. Um, but Gassan Ahadmi and Panuche Kamara coming through the door at Ipswich Town. Your first thoughts, please. Do you want some, some breaking news? Oh, no. In the next few minutes, Gillingham will be announcing a new signing and we, we can we can carry that live if you want. I'll keep, oh, amazing. I'll keep, I'll, keep my, I'll keep my ear to the ground. They've done the eyes emoji. They said, not too late for us to get involved, is it? No, it's not, Gillingham. It's not too late. But we'll bring that to you as we get it. Um, Ipswich, Ta- Ipswich Town's business. Um, yeah, they weren't they weren't the players we were talking about going into mm. into the day. It's all happening. Forest Green are doing a deal. Unbelievable scenes. Um, they weren't the names we were talking about going into this, were they? But um, yep, they've come out with um, with 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 two players that that we're, we 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 knew of. We've seen mm. them play. We've seen them do good things, um, and two good players which who will hopefully hopefully improve the the squad. Yeah. I mean, yesterday we were talking about Willa Sula, who, let's be honest, I certainly never heard of. I'm, I'm not sure how much you'd heard of him. Never seen him play. And we've ended up with two established League One players. Stewie, what do you make of it all? First of all, the eyes emoji is probably the worst of the emojis now. Do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's overtaken the fishing rod emoji for me um, okay. as, being, as being the worst of those. Um, oh, Something, something intriguing, but I can't tell you what. Anyway, got got that <laughs> off my chest. Good. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two, two solid signings that will hopefully improve the squad. Not necessarily. I wouldn't say necessarily level up the starting eleven instantly, but I think provide some good strength in depth for the uh, for the marathon ahead. Ipswich have started the season very well, but there's a long way to go. The games will come thick and fast as we get into to the winter months and, and who knows what will bend and break and when these, these players will be needed. So um, they seem to fit in with the sort of the general attributes that Kieran McKenna wants in terms of being athletes, powerful, dynamic. Um, had me off as something a little bit different up front. Kamara, I think, is probably the maybe the Sam Morsi understudy, someone that's um, that can provide sort of back up to him that the other central midfielders in the squad might not necessarily have been able to do. So solid. Oh, I'm not getting too excited about this final day, but a couple of good extra additions. Yeah, it's not quite it's not quite last summer, is it? When in the final day of the window, we were talking about Walton, um, Morsi. Selena, like the spine of, of the team and the spine, mostly the two of them there, there's still the spine of the team now. I don't, I don't think it's quite, it's quite and, that, but. And that's good, right? You don't want to be yeah. signing, you don't want to be signing star players on deadline day because that, that reeks of panic and desperation sometimes, doesn't it? Or it certainly means that you're chasing your tail after the season's already started. So just to, just to be adding some solid, squad players on the final day. I think just, just caps a very solid and considered transfer window for, for Ipswich Town. But there's signings that have potential to do really well at Ipswich Town, don't you think? I mean, I had me, I've been really impressed when I've seen him play. Um, and Kamara, Plymouth fans speak very, very highly of him, a guy who can play in multiple positions and by all accounts never stops running. Um, should, we, should we break down the players individually, actually starting with a had me because he was the first link this morning and also the first signing by half an hour ahead of um, Kamara in terms of announcements. Um, big striker, 
We saw him play town again with Burton just a few weeks ago, did very well. He's already scored five goals for the worst team in League One, including the fastest goal in Burton history, 11 seconds at Cambridge earlier this season. Signed three-year deal, low six-figure fee. What do you make of him? What, what do you reckon he will bring? And where do you see him fitting? Because clearly he's been brought in to challenge to be the starting striker. But where, where do you see him fitting within the, the squad? I watched the um, I watched the whole Burton game back this morning. Mm. Um, and I think we came away from the game knowing that he'd, he'd had a good game. He was the standout Burton player. But he he loves trying to force mistakes out of people. Um, and he did it well. He forced Edmonton and Wolfenden into a few errors. He hit the bar in that game. He, he works hard. He's, he's got a really nice, got a really nice touch. He, he, he kind of likes to nip in front of defenders to try and hold the ball up. And he was effective at that. Um, can spin in behind as well. And, and, it, and he's a, clearly a fit lad who will run and run. So um, it's pretty clear that McKenna's got a type at that top end of the pitch. And he, he ticks um he ticks the boxes there. Clearly he's not he's a level up from Will Osula, who we were talking about being another option, who was another option, um, in terms of appearances, but he's not we're not talking about a player who's coming with like a hundred league appearances behind him in the hard May, he's still raw. Um but I think I think he could he could be a really nice kind of de- deputy for Ladapo, I think, who uh brings the same kind of style potentially, which which is really important to McKenna's teams, isn't it? Because it is it's about a system working as one and you need hmm. you need players to be able to to slot in and do that. Cause I, I feared that if there was an injury to Ladapo, you, you didn't quite have the stylistic match to be able to carry on doing what McKenna wants the team to do. So um I got of the two actually I think I'm, I'm probably slightly more more keen on this one. Than, than the than the Kamara deal. Um because okay. I'm just I'm just interested to see what I'm just interested to see what he can do. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think when we did the preseason preview boys, you both said that the the leading scorer, i.e. the leading striker for town was yet to arrive. Gasana Hadmi has arrived. Is there any element of disappointment on your behalf, Stewie, that we've not got a big name in in quotes striker come in the door? I don't know about disappointment. Um, I don't think it had me will be the top goal scorer. I'm convinced that will be Freddie Ladapo now. I'm hopeful that the goal in midweek has kind of brought a bit of relief for him and, and he'll kick on. Mm-hmm. What he brings is a different type of quality to that forward unit. Um, Ladapo is runs in behind, is hopefully their, their most natural goal scorer. It's decent in the air, bit of an all rounder. Jackson is all about pace and pressing. Ahadmi's, I think Danny Cowley, who had him at, at Portsmouth, talked about his super strengths being his uh, ability in the air and hold up play. He looked strong. If, mm. you, if I picked one adjective for him, he looked strong against Ipswich recently. McKenna's referenced his height. He's only six foot, but he looks bigger than six foot. And he's mobile for a big lad as well. And um, if you look at the goals he scored this season, he, he'll go and charge down the goalkeeper. He'll bump into centre halves and just generally make a bit of a nuisance of himself. And with this, again, with this five subs rule, he's someone that I don't think he's going to start week in, week out. But he's someone that you could probably throw on and create a bit of havoc in in these games potentially, where we've seen teams will come to Portman Road, especially park the bus, be difficult to break down. He could be someone that kind of comes on and produces a bit of chaos at times for Ipswich Town. And um, it, it's a fairly low risk one, I would imagine. Um, mm. A low six figure fee to sign in, which in Ipswich Town's current sort of spending power isn't isn't huge amounts of money. I wouldn't have thought wages wise it's going to have broken the bank. So it's a low risk, potential high reward one at the age of, of 21. Um and we've skipped past his his origin story quite nicely there, haven't we? Yeah, uh, someone pointed out to me, I think it was Roscoe, one of the KOA fan social boys pointed out that he'd been quickly deleting all his Norwich pictures off his Instagram uh, while he was awaiting to sign, obviously, at Portman Road. I'm pleased you picked up on the size, Dewey, because when I was I was doing a Meet the Oppo bit, watching Burton ahead of the game, um, and watching him, he looks so much bigger than he physically is listed as. Like you said, six foot, six foot one, but he carries himself so kind of, tall and upright doesn't he 
He yeah, very lot, upright, lot, very lot lean. Physically bigger, yeah, yeah. He's also got a perfectly flat back of head, which <laughs> runs in line with his back. And they always say in fighting, never pick a fight with a guy who's got a flat back of the head. You're in trouble if that happens. So he he already, I'm liking the look of a had me. Um, <laughs> what, why why is that someone you shouldn't fight? Just why because is that, it was that good. It's all it's all linked up. You got a flat back of head, neck, all all synergy there. If you've got a strong neck, very hard to knock someone out with a strong neck. Big head, flat head, usually trouble. Uh, anyway, I'm digressing, boys. Uh, it is somewhat past my bedtime at 10, 10 05 p.m. I'm getting excited. Um, Hutchie, any, anything else to add on Had Me before you get on to Panucci Kamara? No, but I have got something to add from Gillingham. If you're Brilliant. interested, New, <laughs> yep. news, news is in. Gillingham have completed the season long loan sign of Portsmouth defender Haji Noga. That's a big one. That's stick with still awake. St- stick with us, friends. Those zingers will keep coming. Um, Paniche Camaro, Hutchie. You say you're slightly less excited about him. Certainly, in terms of his profile, he's higher profile than I had me. Established at this level. Plymouth fans, sorry to see him go. Tell me why you're slightly... Dis- are you, is it disappointment or slight amusement in terms of them bringing in a player like him in the position that he plays? But it's, it's neither of those things. I, I think it's a good signing. He's a good. He's a good player. It's just that I was intrigued, intrigued more by Ahadme. I think um, in terms, just in terms of an, a potential upside. I think there's there, there's a bigger potential upside. Maybe um, like Stu said earlier, I, I can kind of see Kamara, Kamara being the the Morsi deputy in, in a lot of ways. Um, they haven't got somebody in the squad right now that could replace Sam Morsi for six weeks or a month. If, uh, if he picks up an injury, which isn't, isn't impossible, is it? Um, but he could do that. And that's a, a big insurance policy that they needed, but he's also able to cover the deeper midfield role and can play sort of advanced attacking midfield roles too. So really good versatility um with him but if i look through one he's injured we don't know when we're going to mm. see him but if i look through um the team um right now uh, lee evans i'm happy with sam morsey clearly very happy with the right sided attacking midfield role which i think is the one that he could play connor chaplin very happy with that so Yes, I'm sure he'll be needed and he's a good player. So he's a, he's a really good player to have in the squad. But in terms of a need, I think he's maybe the rainy the rainy day insurance, which, um, look, Ipswich might need that. That could be a really, really important job. So, uh, yeah, I am. I think he's a good signing, but but that had made one just, just intrigues me that little bit more. So is he one you think where town have gone, what, he's available, we can get hold of him, let's do it sort of thing. Well, yeah, yeah. With a lot more, pl- I think with a lot more planning than that, they're well aware. Oh, of, they're yeah. well aware of him. They'd have been, <laughs> they'd have been looking. They've been looking at him for for many many months. They've they know all about him. They know what he can do. Um, but I mean, there's a reason it's only been done on transfer deadline day, isn't there? And that's because it was only doable on transfer deadline day. So um, I like it. He's a good player. He's a good player, but. You're trying to make me say I don't like him, aren't you? That's no, not, not what, to say that's that not, all, that's no. not what I'm saying no, at let, all. <laughs> I'll, I'll take on the baton for, for you, Andy. I think when, when's he going to play? Morsi and Evans are well established at, at the moment. Both have started the season really mm. well. Morsi has, has been really durable throughout his career. There's always a thought that he might get a red card at some point and, and miss a few games. Um, Evans has got a slight injury question mark over him. But then you've got Dominic Ball sitting there, a player who's just had three championship seasons who we wax lyrical about as being a really good signing in our pre-season prediction. And Cameron Humphreys, a really highly rated young player who I was really impressed with against Northampton in, in midweek. We ha- we did a lot of these videos and pods leading up to deadline day and we said, keep Humphreys, pretty happy with that four. That's, that's five players into two positions there. Um, I'm not convinced Kamara is 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 a ten from what I've seen and read about him. I know he started as a sort of a striker slash winger in his early days when he was at Dulwich Hamlet, 
in non-league and, and that's what sort of Crawley described him as, as, as when he went there. But for, for many years now, he's been this kind of dynamic box-to-box player. He looks to me like, you know, when you play a computer game like FIFA and you just hold down sprint the entire time and all the players go 100 miles an hour, he looks like that. He just doesn't stop running. And mm. Stephen Schumacher, his, his manager at Plymouth, said he's like Forrest Gump. He just runs and runs and runs. And he looks like someone that can, can carry the ball up the pitch. But I think there's some technical flaws there as well that, that Plymouth have been working on. I think he's someone that can can give the ball away a little bit at times. Um, so I see him more as a central midfielder than an attacking midfielder. I'm not convinced they needed one, but that the opportunity came to sign a player who, by all accounts, was one, one of the best in, in the division last mm. season that championship clubs have shown interest in. There was an opportunity there because he was... In the last year of his contract, he was on the transfer list because he wasn't going to sign one. Um, Plymouth were adamant all summer that they weren't going to sell him to a League One rival for whatever reason. They've um, they've caved and, and decided that they would do do the deal late on. So maybe it's just a little bit opportunistic from from Ipswich to uh, to get it done. Yeah, I've, I've read uh, comparisons to like a lower league and Golo Kante in terms of Kamara. Uh, and surely, if, if there's a good player available, you can add him. And as you say, Stu, you can weaken a promotion rival at the same time it's a move you, it's a move you can do you should do arguably and it's which can do ultimately yeah. as well they're in the position now with the spending power behind them they can do that we'll go and take marcus harness off you portsmouth we'll go and take Kamara yeah. off you yeah Plymouth. so yeah maybe, maybe a little bit opportunistic there from ipswich so Yes, just just that slight question mark as to where he's, he's going to feature in this. But you never know in football what's what's around the corner, um, and Ipswich are making sure that they've given you know with with the with the strength that they've got now, giving themselves no excuses going in going into the months ahead, are they? Yeah, oh, I'm feeling rather downbeat now, boys. I was excited before I started this podcast. Now you've basically told me Kamara, Kamara's not going to play. I had me he's unproven. Um, let's talk about the window as a whole. Can I just on on a had me just quickly? Yeah. <clears throat> do Ipswich sign Gasana had me if they hadn't gone to Burton recently and he'd played well against them? For all the talk about the data dashboard, and I'm sure these are two players that Ipswich are well aware of. Kamara's a player we all knew about. I had me less so. I think if he hasn't started the season as well as he has done, and if he hasn't played against Ipswich as well as he had done, I'm not sure they sign him. On deadline it happens quite, day, it happens quite a lot, doesn't it? In football, it does. And and we, we, Mark, Mark McGuinness did it for Arsenal, at yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Uh, people will talk obviously about John Walters impressing, yeah. um, in the FA Cup against Ipswich. Wes Burns scored for Fleetwood on, on the final day and come here. It happens a lot in football, and this isn't a knock on Ipswich, it, it happens right across football. It just makes me laugh when we hear all about the data and the the you know, dozens and dozens of scouts and people sort of pouring over it as if it's some sort of scientific model that, you know, us us plebs wouldn't understand sort of thing. And and how often does it happen that you go and sign a player that's just done quite well against you you recently? Um not knocking it at all. I hope he's he's a he's a really good signing for Ipswich, but um I don't I don't think they sign him unless he's uh, unless they played him recently and unless he'd had the start to the season that he has. And sometimes do you know what? Some of the best signings come from from situations like that. So we'll see. I like I like that they're getting a hot hand in him, like five goals in a really pretty poor Burton team already this season is really good. Um that is kind of almost the sum total of his of his goal scoring career, isn't it? All, almost. But they've they've signed a hot hand who's fit, ready to go. Um and Lucky boy, be on the bus to Accrington probably with his new new teammates within 24 hours of signing. So we might well see him sooner rather than later. And his flat-backed head. Um, right then, friends, let's talk about the window as a whole. They've made nine signings. I'm going to read them all off now, just in case you need reminding. Freddie Ladapo, Dominic Ball, Greg Lee, Tyrese John Jules, the big cat, trade by Andy Warren, Marcus Harness, Leif Davis, Richard Keogh, Gasana Hadmi, Panuche Kamara. Andy, window as a whole, they've signed 10 fewer players than they did this time last year, which can only be a good thing in terms of cohesion and balance. They've looked to fill gaps that we knew were there, um, and that's they've largely done that, I think we'd all agree. So how would you evaluate the window as a whole and, and the players they've signed? 
really measured and sensible. I think um, they've addressed addressed some issues. They've clearly missed out on some players along the way. I'm amazed we've done how long? How long have we been recording? Twenty minutes. We haven't even mentioned George Hurst yet. Um, I think that they've missed out on some players along the way, but they've they've straight. I think they've strengthened in every every area of the the pitch, bar bar goalkeeper really, and um, I think it's quite well planned out and, and measured really. Um, Derby have just signed Will Osula, by the way. Oh, there we go. Uh, breaking, um, but but yeah, it's um. I quite, I quite like the win. They've added to a good squad. It was a good squad already. They've added some good players to a good squad. And um, they're in a position where they really need to be challenging right at the top end of this division. And the best thing is we're sitting here on, on deadline day, 45 minutes left, and they're joint top of the league. Mm. This, is, this, is, this isn't trying to play catch up. They're, they've started well and they've added to it. And that I think that's the thing that I'm most enthused, most enthused about. If I were to push you, Andy, to give a grade in this season of kids getting exam results to the window as a whole, how would you grade it? Am I allowed to? Am I allowed to use old-fashioned grades? Because yeah, I don't, I don't understand the new ones. They're nonsense. Everyone that's never going to translate to stuff like this, is it? No one's no. ever going to start doing exercises give it, like this. I give it a nine. Not, I don't even not know if that's do it. Good. I, ref- I refuse to do that. Um, <laughs> I would give it a B plus. Added the plus, nice. So just just a, a few few elements away from a, a top scoring grade. Watto, your thoughts on the window and a grade, please. Uh, that's exactly the grade I had in my head. Andy and I are always on the same is. page. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But you can confirm we haven't. We you had, you didn't ask us to do that until that no. very second. So you can confirm. No, no, no. That. you this just have this is... this nat- natural tele- telepathy yeah. between you. So you're um, saying B plus? Yeah, because I think as you said earlier, they it, it's a lot more calculated this window. It was supermarket sweep last year. It was just sort of grabbing everybody and then trying to sort of ram it all together. Um, this year has been a lot more thought out. Um, Got some bodies in early for the start of pre-season. Big tick. Got some money signings done before the start of the season. Another big tick. Have now sort of bulked it out a little bit. Brought in some experience in Keo. Added, just bulked out a couple more positions with the, with these last two. Left side, massive upgrade, um, which we know we needed. I guess the one question mark still is whether that top end of the pitch is really enough of an improvement on last mm. year. You've seen Norwood. Borden, Piggott, Selina, go out, his harness, John Jules, Ladapo, had me enough of an upgrade on those. We'll see. I think I think that's a really it's a really fair fair debate to have. Um but what I think the way I would argue on that one is that may maybe sort of player for player, maybe you could argue that. That, that they haven't massively upgraded. But what I would say is that each of those signings fit fit Kieran McKenna's football a lot better mm. than the the one the players that he inherited, like Piggott, Bon, Norwood. I I think it was pretty clear from sort of March time onwards that that none of them really fitted the mould that, that Kieran McKenna wanted at that end of the pitch, which is why it was like a revolving door of who would start games. He he, he couldn't really settle on one and I, I just like now that he's got players kind of in his image now that mm. that he can that he feels like he can coach um and 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 work with and I think that is where the upgrade the upgrade can come in terms in term they may not man for man they may not be that much of an upgrade in in many people's eyes but I bet if you ask Kieran McKenna he'd tell you that he's really upgraded um in, in those areas. So mm. that that that's what fills me with a bit of a bit of confidence from this point on. Talking about Hurst, how about ones that got away? Um obviously last summer we were talking about Matt Crooks and a few other names who've long since consigned to the dim recesses of my memory. Um George Hurst, Bursant Selena, Macaulay Bon have all been talked about constantly this summer. Um has Bon gone anywhere by the way? Do we know? Is he is he 
departed? No, nothing. Not yet. Soon. Still forty no. minutes. Still forty minutes left. Um, no, I chucked Oxford in as another club that we're having a look at him this morning. Um, Piggott's at Portsmouth, Norwood's at Barnsley. I, just, I was waiting for Bond to tip up at a, another sort of League One rival of Ips, which is Oxford, Charlton, his former club, Bolton. Hmm. We're all having a look. I think Shrewsbury were mentioned as well. But yeah, as of 20 past 10, as we speak, I don't think he's gone anywhere yet. So I do worry about Macaulay because he, he made it, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he'd made it pretty clear that he wanted to come back to Ipswich. And I, I, yeah. Ipswich had obviously said to him, McKenna and the club had sort of said to him, the door's not completely shut. We'll see how things go. But it felt like he was one they kind of kept up their, their back pocket just, to, just in case things didn't happen and then things didn't happen which probably kept the hope alive for him with the Hurst thing not happening and others and I think he was probably hopeful that this was this was um, going to lead to a, a late hero's return but um, I'm not sure Ipswich were ever mega mega keen on it to, to be honest so um, be interesting to see if or where he he tips up or whether there's there's a January narrative surrounding him at some stage we'll see there's a had me got number 18 is that bit? <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> They're just to rub salt in the wounds. I don't think he's got a squad number yet. They they announced um, Kamara's, didn't they? He's, he's wearing twenty eight. Of his is Kamara twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of um, ones that got away, Hutchie though, are there any? Obviously, George Hershey you've already mentioned there. He would have been a, I guess, a higher profile striker in terms of signing than had me. It, 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 do you think there are any players would look back on and go, ah, oh, I wish Town had got them, Selena, you know that kind of thing. The Selena, the Selena one, I think they're they're the they're the two. I'm sure there are there are more that that were never were never public knowledge that nobody ever ne- ever knew or knew of that Ipswich would really have liked that they mm. weren't able to do. But Selena, there is there aren't players like him in League One. Like whether that's necessarily a massive plus or not I don't know yes he has games where he's quiet and is is not involved so much but I don't think they've quite got the same kind of guile and and sort of class in the final third that they would have had if they'd had a Selena but if you compare if we if we take Selena and kind of harness as the the comparison here harness is that regular goal threat the hard work, the um, the energy, the pressing. Selena doesn't give you that. Maybe, maybe they, they, maybe those kind of players just fit the system better than Selena did as well. They, they wanted to sign him, of course they did. Hmm. But I'll always have a nag about Bursant Selena that he should, he should be around. I'll always have that little nag. But um, I can also see a world where actually what they've done is probably probably in the short term at least sort of more sensible he might be back mate there's next summer yes yeah that there's there's magnets going involved involved here there'll be a, there's a magnetic pull yeah between him and ips which you never never say never town in the championship it'll start all over again um stewie you've already referred to um worries perhaps about the top end of the pitch so is it for you someone like george hurst would be the, the one that got away or do you not feel that way uh, i don't know He's the one they wanted, quite clearly. Mm. And the fact he's ended up gone to the championship, I think um, signed a new contract at Leicester tells you the level of player that he is would have been better than anything of Ipswich have probably got at the moment. That's not being disrespectful to the players in the building at Ipswich. So I guess when you say it like that, it is one that's kind of got away, but it's not like he was probably on the hook at any stage anyway. So... Mm. um I think they had a little inquiry about Will Keane from what I've heard a few days ago. I don't think that ever got beyond that. They they had a little look at talking about it being opportunistic. Wigan have got a ton of strikers there. If you look, they've just signed Asti Fletcher. They've got um, Charlie Wykes just come back from his long-term absence. They've still got people like Callum Lang and um, Nathan Broadhead. So they probably looked at that and went, oh, I, I just wonder, even though Keane started a few quite a few games for Wigan at the start of the season, scored a couple of goals, but very quickly, no, he's signing a new contract here. Okay. Yeah. And there would have been dozens of players in every position that Ipswich have had made just little phone calls and little inquiries about over the summer. Um, 
look, it's a good squad. It's a very, very good squad, ultimately. You know, you write it down and you go through the positions. I think I've got it to 25 players, what you would call the first team squad. Two for every position. Hmm. And as we saw in midweek, you know, you can change the whole eleven. And it still looks like a team that most League One clubs would would have most of those those players. You're going to have people not making the bench week in week out that a lot of League Club what League One clubs would want. They've given themselves every opportunity to be in the mix this season. Do you know what the one? But I look at that squad, the depth chart there, and there's one there's one fear that I have and that's a long-term injury to Christian Walton. That's mm-hmm. probably the only position looking up and down that, that I genuinely have a fear that, uh, what are they going to, what are they going to do if, if that happens? Cause yeah, you could lose someone like Morsi and that would be a massive blow. That would be a massive blow. Of course it would, there's players throughout that team that would be a massive blow, but, and this isn't, I don't think this is necessarily even a massive knock on, on Hladke here, but, Walton is that far, I think, above the level of a League One goalkeeper mm. that you couldn't possibly have a backup goalkeeper that brings you the level that Christian Walton brings. So that that is my one my one fear for this squad. There's loads of players that they could lose and it would be a massive blow and they'd have to have players stepping up to cover them. But I feel that they'd have players that could do it. Mm. Um, that's one area that I'm not sure about. The, the other small one I've got is that there's a lot of eggs in the Chaplin harness basket at the moment in those two 10 positions. I don't know if it had me can play in that slightly deeper role. He looks like a nine to me from the limited yeah. bits I've, I've seen. So if we're discounting him as an option, you've got Chaplin harness, a Luca who might be out for a little while now, um, looked like a nasty injury on, on Tuesday. And then John Jules, who might be a, I think he's a, a serious talent. I don't know if he's going to be a seven out of ten every week, Mister Consistent, relied upon player um, at his age and where he's at in his journey. So if you suddenly took Chaplin or Harness out of it, and and from what I hear, the Chaplin injury is not too bad. I think he'll be fine for the weekend. But if you took one of those out of it, that's where my concerns about the sort of the depth of the attack would would come in a little bit. Do you think that's part of the reason they've got Kamara in though? Because he can he can play in that sort of role, can't he? He can. I I I think he's more of a central, proper central midfielder though. I, mm. I'd probably put that as his third his third role. I still think that Kyle Edwards could play in one of those roles. Mm. I, 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 and we 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 talk about him as being a, a right sider now, don't we? As being a Burns sort of deputy. I st- I still think he could play tighter, narrower. He'd have to he'd have to improve in some areas and he'd have some things to learn. But I just think his ball carrying could be it'd be something different. But I mm. I, I think he could be something there. But I think I yeah I'd, I'd, I'd agree with Stu to a point there as well. Just on the Hadme thing, uh, Roscoe's done an, an insight vid on both signings, speaking to journalists who've covered both of both the guys. And uh, the guy at Burton certainly says that Hadme is definitely a striker, definitely a nine. Says he may develop into a ten as he gets through his career, but definitely at the moment a nine. You're right in that observation, Stewie. Um, in terms of wrapping this up as we approach half an hour of chat around it, when I asked you the question at the start of the season on the, on the, the preseason show, prediction show, boys, I said, well, who's the best signing of the summer? And you both said Dominic Ball. Sitting here now, are you sticking with that? No. What are you saying? Hutchie? It's between, between two for me. Yeah. Um, there's the one that I'd say right right here and now it's hard to get deviate from Marcus Harness, isn't it? Correct. Um here in the here and now. But I think I'm gonna really, really like Leaf Davis. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's he's growing every week, he's getting better and better. Um so actually I'll probably say Leaf Davis. Uh, he's really, really grown on me. And you're smiling, Stuart. Stu's Watson. nodding. If you're gonna say Leaf <laughs> Davis now, I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave. You, there's no you, point you... us. There's no point us both being on this. <laughs> I think at that st- when, when did we do this preseason pod? Probably like a few days out from the season. Davis had only just arrived, and hmm. we were still getting our heads around who he was and what he is. Um, and he's right. He's as the games have gone by. Look, you can start to see why Ipswich have forked out a million pound plus 
for him. And that was the weakest area of the team last season. And um, so I, I think he has to be the most important. He has to okay. be the most important signing. I did say yeah. Marcus Harness in that preview, and I'm sticking to that for the time being. Best signing. And if you want to laugh, friends, I've ranked all nine signings. I'll be going up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. It was so successful last season where I had Sean Luco 19th and Christian Walton 15th that I've done it again this time around. Sorry, Stu, I, I cut over you there just to plug that bit of content coming up. No, no, I think that that's about it, really. I think if you were looking at who has improved the team mm. the most from last season to this, uh, yeah, this, it was the left side was what held Ipswich back so much. They became lopsided. They became a little bit predictable. Um, I think Leif Davis has, has helped re readdress that. Um, okay, so you're both saying Leif Davis. In, in turn, I'm not going to ask you about who, who the worst signing is because I think they're all good signings. All nine signings are good. And you can see the, the thinking behind them. How about Sleeper? I'll describe it as Sleeper. Is there someone in that nine that you think we're not talking about that much at the moment, but it's someone that could maybe end up playing a really important role? Hutchie? Can, let's let Stu go first this time. Because, <laughs> okay. Because I'll get you to write it down. And I'll grin and nod this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Richard Keogh. Yeah. I just think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. This is nonsense. We've just talked about all the other ones. You He's the only one we haven't talked about. You ought to do a stage show, you two. The power of the it'd be, mind. It'd be, it'd be really boring. <laughs> what sort of Warren? So yeah, you're both just, saying Richard I just, I just think uh, off-field as much as on-field, I think he'll have a big on-field role to play at, at some stage, I'm sure. But off-field as well, I think that, that experience, it's which clearly have looked at successful sides in League One, seen that most of them have tended to have that experienced older head in defence. Um, I think, yeah, not just the impact he'll have on the team at some stage, but the impact he'll have on others around him as well. I do I do agree, but I'd, I, for the interest of trying to not be dull, I'd, I'd throw in, I'd still throw in Ladapo at this point now, I, having kind of come in, got the number nine on his, his back and gone without a goal. And you'd, you'd have to say he's probably trended downwards over the course of time. They've brought in another striker on deadline day. I still think he, he's probably the best one. Of mm. the strikers, and he'll still he's still the main man, probably through the middle of the pitch with what they've got. So, um, as uh, away from Keo, uh, Ladapo is uh, if he qualifies for this for this particular section, um, would be would be a sleeper. He definitely qualifies. If you want to read something that does not agree with these two, and I suspect boys, you won't agree with my ranking. Go and have a look at that tomorrow morning if you fancy a laugh. Right. In terms of moving on from the transfer window, moving towards Accrington, they've still got a game to play this weekend. Tyree Simpson obviously went out the door. We expected that. 500 grand to Huddersfield. Any? We've talked about it a lot, the Tyree Simpson thing. Is there anything else you want to add, boys, at all? Not really. I feel like we've said said everything there is to say about Tyree Simpson. All I'll say is ultimately I think it's a, it's a good deal for all parties. I think Ipswich have yeah. got from our understanding, a very, a very good deal out of this for a player that's um, never started a league game for Ipswich Town to get half a million pound with add-ons, with a good sell-on if he goes on to do well, I think is good business. And I'm pleased for Simpson as, as well, who has probably had to bite his tongue um, privately over a period of time. I always think it's a little bit unfair on, on players. It's an unfair fight at times that managers and their employers chief execs can all have their say about a situation, but the, the player has to kind of sit there not not saying anything. And um, there's always two sides to every story, and I'm sure he'll want to tell his version of events at time. But I genuinely think his motivations, from, from what I gather speaking to people close to him, have always just been about his career and his, his best opportunity to, to play football and progress. And, and he couldn't see that pathway at Ipswich Town. Um, so, yeah, glad that's all, all come to a head. Um, and it's all done now, finally, and we can stop talking about it. Excellent. I already know that Andy will think exactly the same as you, so I shan't even bother waiting for his response. Hutchie, Accrington Stanley. We barely had time to think about Accrington Stanley, um, but that's where you're going tomorrow, in fact. You're driving down there, you lucky boys. Up. Um, up, sorry. All right. <laughs> up. Um, you're driving up to Accrington Stanley, a place that is not traditionally a happy hunting ground for Ipswich Town. They've only won there once. I know they've only played there a handful of times. Um, but they've lost the other games they've played there, I think, by a combined scoreline of 5-1. There's obviously the Morsey-Andy Holt 
revenge angle in this game, which I'm all over, as you would expect. Um, how are you feeling about it, Hutchie? Do you, are you in a, a period of time in your mind that you, you care about this? When you start caring about this game, what do you think about it? Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> no, I care. I care. Um, I think it's time for it, it, this version of Ipswich Town to another chance for them to show why they're different, mm-hmm. why it, why this could potentially be the year. Um, there'll be elements of, uh, yeah, Accrington have, cha- have changed some personnel, some players that we've got to know quite well over the years are not there anymore, but I feel sure they'll offer the same levels of threat and that will be similar to what they faced and ultimately dealt with just about well enough at Burton recently. So um, I quite enjoy watching teams go to grounds like this where they have to really show what they're made of and um, a chance for Ipswich to do just that against a disgusting (laughs) non-league non-league team as Sam Morsi described them after a loss there last season he'll certainly be wanting better this time yeah uh, and obviously Andy Holt I think has been talking about us as a local rag on Twitter today which is nice of him Um, Stewie Accrington Stanley neither had me or Kamara going to go into the side although obviously Kamara's injured had me you wouldn't expect maybe on the bench um, well as Andy said he's, he's a hot hand so I would yeah. imagine they'll want to ride that to a degree I think um, Ladapo will Ladapo I'm getting pulled up on how I say that Ladapo will be that he doesn't care by the way and he's I think Andy asked him and he said yeah. I don't I don't care how my surname said so I, I said them, I, I said them both to him and he didn't even he, he couldn't even tell you that there was a difference in the way that I said them so he's there we not go. bothered Official yeah. ruling. Okay. So I, I think having got the biggest cheer of the night on Tuesday against um, Northampton with that stoppage time goal, he'll be the man to, to start. But Hadmi's five five goals already. Uh, Andy says a bit of a hot hand. I'd, I'd have him on the bench and be bringing him on, on at some stage, depending on how things go. But um, yeah, Kamara doesn't sound like he's... Um, doesn't sound like he's ready to, to play yet. Finished last season, injured with his hamstring, um, came back, came off the bench twice in, in pre-season and, and has now got a bit of a groin issue, hasn't been in Plymouth squad at all so far. So I, I doubt very much he'll be involved. Hmm. Well, the presser today was cancelled um, for obvious reasons, given it's deadline day. So you're going to be speaking to Kieran tomorrow morning. So we don't know in terms of injury updates where we're at in terms of Chaplin and Luco. Um, it, would it be the, str- the usual suspects otherwise, do you reckon? Hutchie, Chaplin and, and Harness behind Ladapo. Yeah. Um, I wonder whether the Burton experience might might push McKenna towards a change at the back. Um, there's obviously uh two two potentials there. There's Keo and Keo and Burgess, who mm-hmm. are worth considering and kind of we've talked about McKenna mate, having kind of horse for course options. Um he may well pick a there's every chance he could pick a, a different horse for this for this course. Edmondson and Wolfenden in particular had a had a few issues with Ahadme, obviously, who's now their teammate, but um at Burton in that in that game. So it wouldn't shock me if if there was maybe something at the back. Well, Cameron Burgess is a horse who has resided in the paddock of the Wham Stadium. It's it's an arena that he knows well. Um He'd be, he'd be the one, and I think for Edmonton, we've seen that that change recently. Burgess, Burgess for Edmonton. That was a ter- terrible analogy. That oh, was Mark. Mark is loving it though. I'm He's sorry, absolutely... that's, that's some of your finest work, Stu, as a segue into changing up, bringing a player into a team, comparing him to a horse residing in a paddock, i.e., a pitch that he's played on once as a resident of said stables. Mm. Um, I think some of your finest work. So there we Thank go. You. I enjoy it. Um, it's 20, 20 to 11 now, it is, friends. And that's what we get from Watson at this time. It's of been night. a long day. Yeah. <laughs> right then. Um, we've got to do predictions, boys. Million pound pick time, Hutchie. As I started to press record on this, you said I haven't given a, a single thought to million pound picks. So I'm hoping this is going to be the hottest of hot takes direct from your hot back. <laughs> <laughs> My hot, sweaty back. <laughs> You are yeah. lo- you're loving it this evening. I like it. Um, okay, I love, I, love, Here, I, love these, I love these special podcast boys. I don't know. I don't know why you can't get up for these. I, f- I love it. Okay, here's a here's a 
Here's a million pound pick for you. We've got one one million six hundred and forty thousand pounds in the in the bank. It's great cash. Could have got could have bought Kamara, a Hadme, and um and harness with that. You could have them all sitting on your bed behind you now. Yeah, instead there's a cat there somewhere. <laughs> um Okay, here we go. Sam Sam Morsi emerges from the Wan Stadium porter cabin Mm -hmm. looking down at the floor walks the length of the pitch out to do the handshakes spends them glaring at the director's box to then within seconds of the kickoff take the ball from kickoff run forwards and win a (laughs) throw-in odds on that please what that whole scenario yep so he has to walk with his eyes down yep Glare at the director's box and then we yep. throw in direct from kickoff. Yep. For that whole scenario to play out in exactly yep. as if that it. happens, I think the match fixing yeah. board might be might be um turning give, their, their scrutiny on you. I'll give you five thousand to one. I'll have a pound that it, on that. That it that it plays out in exactly that circumstances. So Exactly as you as you describe it, it has to be spot on. And Five thousand. You, you, you thought I was going to say score a goal or something, <laughs> did, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll put a pound on that. Okay. And anyone else? Any others that you fancy? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Um, I also think he'll score a goal separately because I didn't put that on at the weekend, so I should put it on again. And I think Leaf Davis is going to have two shots on target in this game. So three separate bets. We've got the, the Morsey yep. long shot with a, a whole set of circumstances that need to contrive to, to happen. Morsey to score, I'll give you eight to one, standard. And Leaf Davis to have two shots on target of any sort of variety. Uh, I'll give you 15 to one on that. Not impossible Greg Lee plays in this game, is it? Um, no. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'll put £50,000 on Morsey to score. Yep. And ten thousand pounds on Leaf Davis. Remind okay. me, just t- tell me the odds you gave me. Five thousand to one on the Morsey contrivance. Eight to one on Morsey scoring. Fifteen to one on Davis having two shots on target. I am typing. I, probably, I have to write these down, otherwise I'll forget them. It's all right. No, Eight to one Morsey scoring. Five thousand yeah. to one on throw in scenario. And how many on? How much on Davis? I get, I'll give you 15, fifteen to one. Two shot. Two shots on target. Yeah. Okay, and it's right that you need to write these down because we need to be in accordance, good record keeping, etc. So yeah, it's very important. important. Um, Stewie, while Hutchie commits those to paper or indeed computer screen, what are you say in prediction wise for this game? Um, well, I guess the smart man who'd be on a score draw. Have you seen Atkinson's results so far mm-hmm. this season? They've had a four-four, a three-three, a two-two two-twos. Two Desmonds. Um, so, yeah, they're scoring and conceding. Ipswich had a 2-2 last weekend. Should mention, of course, while you're thinking about your prediction, that, that Town and Accrington are two of only three unbeaten sides left in League One. Accrington have drawn four of their five games, but they're unbeaten. And obviously Town have, have drawn one of them and, and won what six games they've played, isn't it, Town? But they're still unbeaten. And Portsmouth, obviously, the other unbeaten side. So it's a battle of the unbeaten, Stewie. It is. Um <laughs> I haven't really thought about this game at all, despite the fact I have crafted a preview on it today. I can't <laughs> I can't get beyond the fact that it's been a really difficult place for Ipswich to go. We've been mm. there four times now there, lost three times. The one time they won when Matt Gill was caretaker manager, my word, they made hard of hard work of hanging on to the win against 10 men with Paul Cook had just been appointed and was hopping and hollering around a few seats down from us. It's just been a really difficult place to come. And Andy's right. If they can win this one, it will feel like another things are different for Ipswich this season moment. Um, You're going to want a prediction, aren't you, at the end of all of this? Draw. (laughs) Okay. But so what score draw? 2-2, you're saying? 1-1? Uh, 1-1. 1-1. I'm saying 1-1 as well. That's what I put in my... Look at September's games. Hutchie, what are you saying? It's a Wham Stadium, by the way, where you once rocked up in the in the Merc. Was that the Wham? 
it's a Honda Jazz now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things have changed. Yeah. Three one. Three one town. Ooh, which way is it gonna go? Yeah, Ipswich. Three one to would... Ipswich Ipswich Town. That would be quite the statement, wouldn't it, boys? If they won three one at previously unbeaten Accrington Stanley, a place where they generally don't win. And wow. Morsi to plant a <laughs> Plant a flag in the middle of the Accrington pitch, a la Graham Souness. Yes, I'll have, a, I'll have a pound on that as well. Do you remember? H- H- do you remember the Terrell Owens um, celebration years ago for the 49ers at Dallas, where he ran to the centre of the field where they've got a big Dallas Cowboys star, stood right in front of it, and did this. That's what I want to see Morsey do in the centre centre circle. I want to see him stand. do like. Um... Do you remember when Craig Bellamy did the sort of the golf swing celebration or Rooney did the boxing celebration? Yeah. You know, sort of a, I want to see Morsi kind of do a pretend elbow flailing arm on a teammate <laughs> who then falls to the ground, staggers to the ground, dramatically holding their face. Oh, that's an unbelievable shout. Please make that happen. Someone get that message to the town players and Morsi because that would be fantastic if that did happen. All town, great celebration. Right then, boys, that brings us to the end of a quite uh, hectic up and down deadline day pod. I'm sorry for my general level of excitement being quite high throughout, but that's the manner of my beast. Um, there we go. So, boys, they've signed nine players. They're heading off to Accrington Stanley. You're heading off to Accrington Stanley. Any other business? No other business. No other business. I'm pleased that my um, my daughter hasn't come in saying she can't. She's having a nightmare, and my voice is too loud. We've we've got through it. Well done. Did you sedate her pre-show as I requested? No comment. <laughs> Just half a pint of cold pole. There you go. Sort, sort your rights out. Um, right then, friends. A reminder, please, uh, in terms of stuff to, to push, obviously our, our sponsor, Manscaped, use the code carry at manscaped.com for 20% off and free delivery. And also, it's the closing date on Sunday night for the Football Content Awards, where it'd be lovely if you felt able to support us and vote for us to win Best Podcast in the Football League category. You can either vote via their website, we'll share the link. You can vote on Twitter, I'll share the wording. And you can also vote via Instagram, which again, we'll share on Instagram how to vote. Um, One final push there ahead of Sunday would be great, friends, if you could, if you enjoy the show, it'd be fantastic. Um, And also, obviously, follow us across all social medias, Kings of Anger on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And leave us a five-star review on iTunes because it helps other people find us and join the Koei Army. It's coming up now to 10 to 11. Hutchie, has there been any more breaking news in League One? What can I give you? I'm going to, we're not leaving until uh, until I give you some. Luke Jeffcott has left Plymouth Argyle. Any guesses where he's gone? Morecambe. No. Higher. No. Lower. Lo- really? Wrexham. Yeah, he's, gone, he's gone to League Two. What? Where's he Go gone? On. Swindon. Ah, there we go. Some he more was, breaking. He was, he was destined for the championship at some one point, wasn't he? Just like that, your fortunes can change. Just like this show. Trend. One more. I do. I'd love one more. Let me find you one more. Forest Green Rovers have signed a Norwegian striker. Yeah. Called... Harland. <laughs> <laughs> Harland to Forest Green. He just he just loves sustainable energy. He's <laughs> uh, Brian Fiabema. On loan from Chelsea. Lovely. Welcome Lovely in. What happened to the, uh, the 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 player, the striker that you uncovered in pre-season, Hutchie, whose name he, I so yeah. enjoyed? Tice to Linger. <laughs> yeah. Tice to Linger went to Toulouse Ooh. in France. Tasty. Yeah. Tice that's Tlinger. that's the one Ipswich missed out on, really. That really is the one that got away. Um, Two right goals already. I've got, I've got some good good things that I, I've been doing the the League One transfer guide, haven't I? So I've been trying to keep abreast of all the signings. Yeah. Um, just a few observations. Oxford United signed someone from Lazio today for money. <laughs> Dejavan Anderson. Don't know anything more about that, but I need to do some more reading. Um, and Fleetwood have signed a player on loan from Luton. Brilliant name, Admiral Muskway. What? Perfect Admiral. for Fleetwood. Wow, what a name! What what Ad- happens when Oxford try and sign someone from to, like if Lazio take a phone call? Hiya, uh, <laughs> so it's Oxford here. It's Carl Robinson. <laughs> like, like, they're like, what? <laughs> we don't deal. We don't deal with an Oxford. What? Where are you? <laughs> Tremendous! What a way to finish the show with some breaking League One transfer news. Hutch, you've got more. 
I can, mate. There's always more. I thought, I thought you were going to break in there. You want another one? I can scroll and I can scroll down my little thing until I find another one if you want. You, you've said it now. Okay, Ryan Broom has gone to Cheltenham. There we go. That's it. Let's call time on it now, shall we, boys? Ipswich Town have signed nine players in this summer transfer window. They signed two today: Gaston Ahadmi and Panuche Kamara. They play Accrington Stanley this weekend. The boys will be there. If you're there, enjoy the game. If not, follow it all with us. And we'll be back next week, friends, to break it all down with you and have a bloody good old chinwag. Have a fantastic weekend, whatever you're doing. And we'll see you on the other side.